Hi guys! In today's video, I will be unboxing and running a few first prints with the BQ Magician 3D printer. The BQ Magician is a small delta type printer. It costs around $160 and it can print up to 80 millimeters a second and has a printing area of 100 millimeters in diameter and 150 millimeters in height. So let's start unboxing it. In the meantime, here are a few more details. The BQ Magician is equipped with the Big Tree Tech 32 bit board and Allegro A4988 drivers. It's also equipped with a 2.8 inch resistive touch screen display. It's shipped fully assembled and it's available in four different colors. And it comes perfectly packed in a nice cool box. And the first thing you see is a card with contacts for support. And the printer user manual. In this manual, you have explanations on how to work with the slicer, which in this case is the new Cura. You also have a sheet with the first instructions. This alerts you to remove the zip ties that secure the axis before turning on the printer. Packed with the printer are two bags and a filament spool. One of them contains the following. a glue stick and a scraper, a USB cable and some tools and parts. We can find an SD card, memory card adapter and an auto level sensor. some Allen keys, and a couple of spare nozzles and heat brick. The screw and spacer are for the spool holder. In the second bag, we can find a power supply. It's a 12 volt, 10 amp output compact power supply. Let's take the three zip ties out carefully. And now the axis can be moved. We also get a spool with 250 grams of white PLA filament. Next, let's put on the spool holder on top of the printer.
It's also included a gummy pad. This is a flexible printing surface. It's only used on non-heated beds. One more thing we need to do is to remove the protection sheet of the acrylic base. Now we are good to go. On one side you have the memory card slot, the touch screen display and the reset button. On the other you have the clone Titan extruder and the power button. And on the other side you have the USB connector and the power connector. The hot end is equipped with three fans and on one of the sides you can find the auto level sensor connector. Now let's turn the printer on. And let's install the auto level sensor. This sensor is installed only when we need to run the auto level sequence and needs to be removed before heating the hot end and before heating the print button. The sensor is a film pressure sensor. You get a few spare foams for the sensor but each will last a long time. It's as simple as sticking it on the nozzle and connect the sensor. Now we just need to load the filter. Now we press leveling. The printer homes first and then starts the auto level sequence. After that it homes again. But here I got a problem. The cable got between the axis and the end stop preventing the switch to be triggered. I had to hit reset button. But it was easily fixed by adding a few more zip ties in specific areas to prevent the cable to jam the axis again. And for the first print, as always, I used the provided demo G code. In the card, you can find a couple of them. At first, I thought that the first layer was being laid perfectly, but in a close inspection, I can see that it's not. The gummy pad is not so efficient.
The remaining layers, on the other hand, look pretty good. This one took a little bit over four hours to print. The model came out good. I noticed a few issues like the left arm that came off while it was printing. There are a few hanging issues, but not a big deal. For the next print, I decided not to use the gummy pad and try using masking tape. With the masking tape, the filament sticks much better, and I was amazed how well it sticks on this non-heated bed. I used the Cura version and the profile suggested in the manual. The model came out very smooth. No major issues except the small elephant foot that I need to address and this small artifact here. And that also can be seen on the other side. To troubleshoot this, I created a profile in IdeaMaker using the same settings suggested and printed this model again. And with IdeaMaker, I could not find any artifact. So it was slicer related. The cube looks perfect. I also printed my layer fan cooling test model. The result is not bad either. I mean, it's not perfect, but I've seen a lot worse. And because we are close to Easter, I printed this bunny. You can find it on Thingiverse. The bunny came out also great. There are some small issues with the ears and a little of hanging on the bunny's chin, but nothing serious. And finally, I printed this knight figure. The top of the sword was printed separately as you can see. I didn't use any platform for this small piece and it got stuck perfectly and printed nicely. The piece is small and yet it printed all the details. The figure came out smooth and the details are awesome. Again, some minor issues that can be easily fixed. 
the outer wall is very good. And that's it you guys. I hope you liked the video. Don't miss the review of this printer that I will publish soon after I test it. Don't forget to follow me on YouTube and Facebook. And if you like my work, click like here on the video and please visit me on Patreon as well. Thanks guys. Bye.